Okay. So start by getting into a good posture for meditation. So just kind of shift in your seat until it feels like your spine is happily upright without tension on either side to keep it that way. So if you need to add a cushion or subtract a cushion, do that. But just get yourself in a way that feels stable without tension. And just a few deep breaths at your own speed, getting yourself grounded. And just be with the body and the breath, encouraging them to release and relax without forcing anything. And then as the body starts to settle, bring your attention to the mind and revive your motivation. You can use the four immeasurable thoughts. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings never be separated from the happiness that is without suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from hatred, attachment, and indifference. And in particular, may this meditation strengthen and develop our bodhicitta. And may that bodhicitta deepen and develop until it's actualized into complete Buddhahood. And then shift your focus to the breath just for a couple of minutes in order to let the surface distraction settle. So no particular agenda with the breath other than making it your focal object. Different thoughts will come and go and you choose not to follow them.
and stay with the breath. And then very gently start to reintroduce analysis and start with the first point, which is it's important to equalize self and others. It's important to see the way in which we're the same. All of our diversity and differences can be interesting and intriguing. Our uniqueness can be lovely to observe, but right now, what is the same between ourselves and others? We are the same in having a consciousness, sentience, an awareness that's able to hold and observe objects like images reflected on a still mountain lake. We are the same in having innate ignorance together with that consciousness for now. Innate ignorance, which is removable, but right now gives us this illusion of separateness, of disconnect. We all have this. It's why we suffer, it's why we behave badly. And we all have Buddha nature. We all have the potential to develop our mind to its utmost extent to have stable happiness, peace, stable compassion, wisdom. We all have this. And we're all the same in wanting happiness and not wanting suffering. And so despite this equality, this sameness, the time spent thinking of others as opposed to self is not equal, not even half, half. The time spent on the self is so much more than the time spent considering others. And yet others are vast and we are only one which doesn't mean we should neglect this one. It just means put its significance in the correct proportion. Because when we don't, self-cherishing drives. What is the disadvantage of self-cherishing? Explain it back to yourself.
there are disadvantages to your own well being having self cherishing. There are disadvantages in your relationships. But then, self cherishing, even just as a concept, the way it influences sentient beings, causes so much suffering in the world, is the root of so many bad policies, so many unfortunate dynamics so much abuse and pain. And so see the way in which self-cherishing lies. It says, I'll protect you, no one else will. But the way it does that is to isolate barriers instead of boundaries. Isolation instead of connection. And so shift and identify the advantages of cherishing others. Not necessarily the outer behaviors start with the mentality when you're working for the welfare of all or working with a purpose, how deeply contented you become, how stable and calm, that quiet happiness, the vitality and energy that comes when you're just in that open, expansive mindset, may I be of benefit to all. And this has such a benefit to your relationships and to your work and to the stability of your life, but also has such advantages as a concept in the world. The different forms of kindness and compassion within national policies, within family dynamics, within workplaces, just people being good to each other without so many expectations, without worrying about payback or what's in it for them, just happy to work for the greater good. And so decide to actually exchange self for others. And start to do it in real time with Tong Len. So start with giving, connect with giving on the out breath. As you breathe out, connect with loving kindness that wishes all sentient beings to have happiness and offer your own past, present and future happiness and causes of happiness, positive karma, merit to all sentient beings. This takes the form of golden light. So start with just the out breath, just loving kindness, just golden light. On the in breath, allow space.
You can think of things like your physical well being and health, things like your financial resources and physical supports, things like the harmonious relationships in your life, and even your own mental well being and happiness. Imagine in the form of golden light offering sending out breath. And then let go of that visualization and focus just on the in-breath for a while. Connect with taking on the in-breath. Taking the suffering of all sentient beings, past, present, and future. That mind of compassion. Giving it to your self-cherishing thought. You visualize black smoke or black light, inhaling it, giving it to self-cherishing, weakening it. And with each in-breath, overcoming resistance to your own troubles, overcoming resistance to the difficulties in your friends' and family's lives, overcoming resistance to all the suffering in the world. And more than just overcoming your resistance to being with it or seeing it, overcoming your resistance, which takes some form of laziness that wants permission not to help or says I do too much or enough, all the forms of resistance Think the in-breath weakens those, opens up your heart. And the actual pain and suffering itself also you take on and give to the self-cherishing thought. Suffering came from self-cherishing Give it back to self-cherishing. Anger, attachment, ignorance, pride, jealousy, wrong views, afflicted doubts, all are strengthened by self-cherishing. Give them back to self-cherishing, weaken it. Just the in-breath, just compassion just black smoke. And then when you feel ready, tie these ideas to both the in and the out breath. In breath, black smoke, out breath, light. In breath, compassion, out breath, loving kindness.
in breath, taking suffering, out breath, giving happiness. And you can stay with that in a spacious, open, less analytical way. Or if it's starting to lose focus, get specific about the sufferings you see, get specific about the happiness you have. So at this point, your choice, whether to be spacious with the visualization and concepts or to be specific. Tie these to the breath. your bodhicitta, cherishing others, getting stronger, yourself cherishing your afflictions, getting weaker, each cycle of breath. And on your in-breath, as you take with compassion, become more and more expansive in what you take. Deeper and deeper. Not just human beings, but other beings as well, animals, those seen and unseen, all of their suffering. And when you give, give expansively, not just to those you love already, but further and further out, the golden light stretches, blanketing the earth, radiating even further out. And the areas you have resistance, notice that. The areas where you don't, notice that. There might be words like deserving and undeserving or worth it and not worth it. See if you can move through those ideas with equanimity. Breathing out, loving kindness. Breathing in, compassion. Whether friend, enemy, or stranger, 
whether those we have affinity for or not, relatable or not. and gradually let go of all analysis until it's just light and breath. A few final in-breaths of black smoke destroy the self-cherishing thought. And then sending light out going everywhere evenly and filling you as well. That your happiness and well-being, roots of virtue, become like a wellspring that fill you up and radiate out. You lose nothing by giving. and let go of the visualization and just be with the breath, simple, stable and focused, regrounding yourself. and be once again with the whole body, the weight of yourself on the chair or on the cushion. Your strong back, your soft front, your physicality present here. and dedicate. Through the merit of this practice, may we quickly overcome the self-cherishing thought and develop cherishing others to its fullest extent, bodhicitta. May that bodhicitta carry us to enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, you can relax your attention. So there's a lot of versions of Tonglen, uh, many correct ways to do Tonglen. There's um, some where you do with alternating nostrils, similar to nine round breathing. There's some where you're focusing mainly on others, not so much you, some mainly you, not so much others, but the premise is the same. Yeah, the premise is the same, which is how do you voluntarily take on hardship and suffering? and give it to the very thing that doesn't want to have it. Yeah. And that kind of counterintuitive work really helps with all of your resistances and frees things up. I think it's, it's a powerful psychology to just think of how different things feel when they're voluntary. Yeah, so if you can make everything voluntary, everything's easy. Yeah. Um, you know, if you think, 
about a trip, like a trip to India or something. And there's a really messy, dirty bus situation, you know, like you're taking the bus from Majna Katila to Dharamsala and it's like 16 hours and it smells like a toilet and there's chickens and all sorts of things in the bus that you wouldn't expect. If you know that going in, it's kind of an adventure. If you have an expectation that it's going to be some clean, glorious bus like in Europe, you're going to be disappointed and kind of like, oh, right? Your expectation changes the way you view it. And whether you see it as voluntary or not changes the way you experience it. So if you can make things voluntary, say, I am an aspiring bodhisattva, therefore I want difficulty and hardship. So when there's difficulty and hardship, this is what I wanted changes the whole outlook, but it can only work if it's genuine. If you're forcing it, then there's going to be some kind of backlash or rebellion or something like that. So do it at a pace that feels authentic to you and where you're at, to, you know, in this moment. And it doesn't have to be in a meditation form, you know, you can do it in a standing in line form or in, you know, stuck in traffic or whatever in its simplified form. Yeah, this thing I don't want, I've decided to want. This thing I cling to, I've decided to give. Simple as that. Yeah. And writing on the breath adds to it.